EDC pry tools. This is an area where I get a lot of inquiries because most people don't understand why you would even want to consider carrying something like this. And then there's some other follow-up questions like, how big should it be? What should I be looking for in them? What's the different characteristics with different materials and so on and so forth. There's just a lot of questions and I think it's time that we address them. I think this is more than enough to do exactly that. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first question we have to answer is why do you need a pry tool in the first place? What's the point? Well, I mean, simply put, it's to save you from destroying this thing, like destroying your knife. Like there's a lot of things that you can do with a pry tool that would really damage a knife blade, whether it's prying with the tip or scraping with the edge of the blade. That's really what it comes down to. The actual prying edge of these things is designed to help you save your knife blade, first and foremost. And uh, that's that's where it starts. We're gonna start with addressing that that just that concern and how you can do it cheaply and easily without any major impact. So we're gonna focus first and foremost on keychain tools because if you're going to try to get this but you don't wanna make a big change to your EDC, this is a good place to start. And you can do so really inexpensively. Now you might be tempted to go on Amazon and type in keychain pry tool and guess what's gonna pop up first? Probably the Gerber shard. And it's been sold a lot, it's got a lot of ratings. Let me tell you right now, it is absolute and utter garbage. Please do not buy that. I'm telling you, you're gonna regret it. Instead, buy this. Now no, it doesn't have the Phillips driver, but it is substantially better than the Gerber shard. So first off, the Gerber shard is made of pot steel, basically, and it's, it's, it's basically been poured into a mold. This is a billet of steel that has been cut in this shape and then milled down to the prying edge. This will bend, but it will not break. And that is key to, well, I mean, of course it will break eventually, but not compared to the Gerber shard, which I think I've broken five of them at this point, and I have completely given up, even though the tool set is quite decent. Okay, so prying edge, good. And it doesn't have some stupid nail pulling notch because you're not gonna be pulling nails with this thing. That's not the point. And it also has a place to cut open boxes so you can once again, save your blade from getting tape all over it. There you go. And maybe, just maybe, you can get away with using this more often than not where you would have otherwise used a knife blade. You have a little graduation for Imperial, a little bit for metric on the back, some hex uh, drivers, some, some closed wrenches. I don't really think those are particularly useful, but it does also have this clip, which is incredibly useful, along with a bottle opener, which is a constant companion to all of these pry tools. The best thing about this clip though, is that it's gonna let you become a dangler for your keys. So you can attach it to a belt loop. And that is where this thing gets really good because it becomes a dangler for your keys. And if you don't have your keys, you can just attach it to your belt loop and forget it's there, which is great. This is definitely something I recommend. And as we'll talk about, the other benefit being that it's probably not a hardened steel or it's very soft in general. I mean, in my experience, it is quite soft, which is a good thing because you want to be able to use this to potentially not scratch whatever you're scraping. Like you're getting that sticker off something that could scratch. You don't want to use hardened steel or titanium because you might actually etch or like leave a mark in whatever it is you're scraping. So that is a very, very, very good tool at only $6. Okay, we're done, right? No, no, I mean, that that's a good place to stop. If, you're, if that's all you came here to find something to quickly add to your keychain, that's what I would recommend. But there are more premium versions of keychain tools that uh, can do this as well. And so I'm going to talk about some of them. Uh, these three in general, I think are quite interesting. And so we'll focus on them. The first one is the Talon designed by Talon Sai in collaboration with Travax. Really, really good. I actually uh, waited for a long time to get it because I wanted the S35VN version. This has been heat treated up above 60 HRC. So it means that this Phillips driver and this flathead are going to hold and stay firm for a very long time. You're, you're gonna have a hard time bending or damaging these edges, which is great. Now, I will say one downside is that this prying edge is pretty thick. 
not particularly useful unless you're using it for camera equipment, which I do and I find it very useful for. I may end up narrowing this a little bit more with a, a file or something along those lines in the future, but still, it's really good. It works as a dangler for your keys right here, and you can then use this top section to attach it to a belt loop or a bag or whatever else you wanna use. And because it has a much wider opening, it, it can be a bit more useful than the one from Night Eyes. So definitely worth considering, but it is going to come at a premium price, like pretty expensive. Now, similarly, we have another useful keychain tool. This is the Ever Ratchet Clip. And so it has a prying edge. It's a little bit steeper this time around, but it does come to a thinner spot. So I do like that. Hex hole there, but it also has this, which is really cool. So this is a patented technology with them that basically gives you a ratcheting bit driver. So easy as you put your thumb on the back to keep it from uh, coming out the back, but it'll still hold so you can see that it still holds and then you just ratchet With it you can turn it over if you want to go the other direction, right? go the other way or this way Right and then uh, you store the bit back in now. There's these little shelves that are cut in there, which will hold the bit Really really neat made of titanium So it's not going to have as much corrosion issues and you have a spot to attach this to a belt loop you just slide it in there and it's not going to come out, which is great. I've never had it come out yet. Knock on one. And you can attach this to your keys either by putting it into this slot here, or actually I prefer to use an S beaner and attach it from there to your keys. Cause then you can take this off and use it for prying and then reattach it to your keys. All three of these are quite good, varying different prices. The Talon being the most expensive by a mile. And then the uh, Everatch is somewhere in the middle at around $25 to $30, depending. You also have some multi-tools that will have prying functions. This is an example of one that I actually really like. This is made by Ant Designs. It has a file on the side that's like a milled file, which is pretty interesting. It has a craft blade holder, so good for opening packages, right? Bottle opener right there. And it has a prying edge. Now, as you can see, this one has a little notch in the middle for, I'm, I'm guessing staples, because I don't think you're prying a, a nail out with that, right? I don't recommend that you buy a titanium tool with a split in the middle, because it does dramatically reduce the strength. And unlike steel, which will bend usually before it snaps, titanium is more brittle. So it's going to, even though it has a really good strength to weight ratio, it can snap a little easier, especially if the edges are really thin, like this isn't very wide. So just be careful when you have something this thin, you don't wanna accidentally snap the edge off. I have other keychain prying tools that are really, really neat, like this one from Gondek EDC. Here's another from CRKT, which I don't think is as good as the Night Eyes, but it is a lot more stout. It has a glass breaker on the top, and in theory can be used as a dangler the same way as, um, these other ones. So still worth a mention. I would consider this decent. The pry tool is probably my least favorite of the bunch because it's tapered on both sides, which I never liked. Uh, this slips out of whatever I'm doing most often. And, and I just, it's just, it's better to have it tapered only down from one side. Just something to be aware of. Okay. So keychain tools are usually where you should go. If you're interested in just adding the functionality of a pry tool, that's where I would start. Let's move these out of the way for now. If you're looking for something that can do a lot more, let's say you're in the trades or and you want something that fits in your pocket or in a pouch or something along those lines, or it could fit in the side of a pouch of a multi-tool. Well, that's where you're gonna start looking at things like these. Okay, so let me move these out of the way for a second. And these are mostly, I think with the exception of this tool, are made in steel, which is the right material for doing hard use work on the, on the edge of a pry tool. Uh, I think probably the toughest one that you could easily access is gonna be this from Rogan. It's called the RPT. Now I have had a little bit more fun making a polished convex edge. He doesn't do that. It's, it's a little bit simpler than this. And I polished the secondary edge as well. Uh, but this is a great tool. And usually it's sold in carbon steel and his new ones are actually heat treated. They are seriously tough. Like you're gonna have a really hard time breaking one. This will fit in a lot of different pouches. It's just big enough 
to do uh, stupid things with and not too big that you can't fit it in place. So uh, that's what these shoes are. All right, now there's other options as well. Most of which unfortunately in this case are discontinued. So this one I had uh, is, is another Gondek EDC collab and uh, really amazing called the Persuader. It has a hook pry. So this is more of a true uh, prying tool. The pocket wrench, which has this sort of universal flathead because you see how it tapers. You can change the angle to match the flathead dimension. Pretty cool. Also has a kind of a universal uh, closed wrench and markings. This was great, but it, it's also been discontinued for a long time. This one is gone, but once again, steel. These two, uh, still available. One of these from Upknife, the T1, has a uh, number two Phillips. And the thing is, is this is in CPM or 154 CM and is heat treated over 62 HRC. So it actually is going to hold the edge. It's not going to snap on you, which is great. It's not going to bend or snap. And because of that, it's kind of in this weird middle ground. It's almost small enough to be a keychain. Actually, it could be to some people. And uh, it's heat treated, so it can do some real work, but it's small. It's kind of a weird middle ground between all these other pry tools. And it looks kind of neat. It looks made to look like a rocket. It has a, a split here that could actually pull out a nail, if I'm being honest. I've even narrowed it a little bit with my own file work. It has bottle openers on both sides. Yeah, four millimeter driver, hex bit driver. And if you want to, you can even use it right in the middle, right there with that notch. Let me see, let me grab that real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Like that. And there, it will actually hold the bit, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you could also store a bunch of bits, but you're gonna need some elastic bands but it does kind of takes away, take away from how flat this is. Really neat tool from Upknife. I'll put a link to this as well. But yeah, it's kind of this weird middle ground where you get a little bit of everything from that tool. And it doesn't have any loose parts that come with it. You can also get, this is the one thing I would put in the use category, but it's still titanium. This is from Countycon. And Really what this is, is kind of to help you separate things. They have plastic versions as well, along with a flat one that doesn't have this curve. And they're really for separating like um, different parts in a, an interior of a vehicle, for instance, or pulling out the uh, radio in your car. That's the kind of stuff that you're designed to use this for. It has two edges, one on each side. And I found this to be a surprisingly useful tool and I keep them in kits because they're so small. And maybe the flat version is even better because it basically disappears in organizers and it's the perfect thing to put in the side of a multi-tool pouch. So there's that. That's actually a pretty decent one and they come in about 10 bucks with the titanium. Now, the last category is a personal obsession and I don't necessarily recommend to everyone. And that are going to be like multi-tool-esque pry tools. Like they do a lot more than just pry things. I guess this one would also fall in that same category. So I actually just got this from a company called EDC Monster. And you can kind of get a sense of what they're trying to do here. So it does all of this stuff like this little magnetic attachment opens up. And you have bit storage in there. And, a, you know, a... Uh, ratcheting bit driver in there and sometimes it's just too much and this is what i would consider a, a pry tool that is a bit too much for me is it cool hell yeah and uh, do i have a hard time saying no definitely but uh still very very neat this actually ha is also like a marking tool <laughs> they really thought of a lot of stuff with this thing but when you start getting this big well at that point it's taking up a lot of space. You really have to know exactly what you want. I, I th that's a cool one, but it's not really my forte. These on the other hand are exactly what I'm looking for because I thought the one thing that I really would like my pry tool to have is a screwdriver. And this basically started because of one guy and the Vero Engineering Fulcrum. And this was pretty much the first one in this category that I, I purchased. It's still my favorite. Yeah, definitely still my favorite. And, uh, that's because everything is perfect about it. 
the prying edge and the angle that it takes is it's going to change how you feel about all other pry tools because it's just perfect to basically do every task i've ever used it on and i've been pretty abusive with this thing i've even hammered it a couple of times and uh held up like a champ no issue whatsoever it has four millimeter bits that are held in by these elastic bands and the clip itself provides retention for that four millimeter bit. So you can have up to two of them in there. And uh, yeah, what a great tool. Like genuinely more useful than I ever could have imagined. And it's the reason why I went down this rabbit hole in the first place. It's because this became so useful and I carried it every day that I find myself collecting all of these other designs and seeing what there was available. Definitely recommend this one. If you're looking for a true user, this is a good thing. Just keeping in mind that it's titanium, it's very, 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 well, there's a lot of different types and finishes on it. It's definitely on the more premium side at around a hundred something dollars. But uh, it's a consideration if you're serious about carrying this every day. I just don't know if I'd recommend it to everybody. We're going to get into which ones I would recommend in just a minute. The best one maybe I've ever tried, functionally speaking, has got to be this from uh, novel carry. It had three bits stored in the on the inside of this tool and the thing is it didn't have any elastic bands to worry about. It had this awesome slider and it had the right dimensional uh, pry, it had a bottle opener, all of these metrics. It even had like a nice milled clip, not a milled clip, bent clip. It's just a really good design and this is in steel so I had that hard use version and then I also had the titanium one. I wish I could recommend them, but unfortunately they have been discontinued, sadly. I'll put these over here for now. That does not mean though that you can't get smaller tools that do the same thing. And this is probably the tool, if you're gonna go premium and you're gonna get one, I would recommend to more people than even the original Fulcrum because of where it can fit. This has the option of getting a clip, a clipless, which I actually, this is the one I carry the most. And it also has an option to get a different clip that uh, allows you to attach it to your keys. So this can also, in addition to being a bit driver and a pry tool, can be a keychain enabled version. That is going to cover it for a lot of people. So if you're gonna spend a premium price and you're not 100% sure, I would definitely recommend the small one over the big one unless you're absolutely sure you need that extra oomph that this provides. Just something to keep in mind. And if you want something even more badass, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these. In fact, this is uh, probably my, recently has been the more used of the pry tools that I currently have because it is full size hex, which match up very well with things like the Gerber Center Drive as a pairing. They have storage for two bits without any elastic to break. They have an inline driver in the back but my, one of the cool things about this tool is that it also has a spot at the top to put extra torque on the bit. Just a really, really good design. This is from Teal Designs. He makes them himself. And uh, they go on um, his uh, website from time to time. The best thing to do is follow him on Instagram. And you'll be able to find these from, you know, from him there. You can also just message him and ask him when he's making his next batch. But uh, you can get these with a notch for pulling out uh, nails or not. I prefer when it's titanium like this for it to not have that notch. This is a really nice, strong prying edge. And yeah, it fits uh, right into, well, let me just take off my belt clip here for a second. It fits right into the pen slot for this holster going with the Gerber center drive as well as the, um, the flashlight that I carry. So that's kind of what I've been carrying lately because it just kind of fits. That narrow combination with a bit driver and a pocket clip and everything else, yeah, that is pretty damn awesome. And then the last one on the table, and we'll let you go, is gonna be this. This is another thing from Ant Designs with a file, a once again, a strong um, extra torque position. Bit driver right there with a magnet and it also has a magnet on the back. I actually really like this design. 
I got a chance to play with the prototype and they've made some nice improvements since. Frankly, the only thing I'm not keen on is the pocket clip, even though it can fit in two positions. And the fact that they made the prying edge come to a little bit too thin. I think that's going to end up breaking off. Now that's easy to fix, but generally that's a pretty neat little tool. Pry tools. I gave you some options, I hope. Uh, I highly recommend this $5 tool. You're never going to go wrong with that. And there is a purpose for this. I mean, like there's, not, there's some things your blade, your, your knife is just not going to do. Pry tools can do that. And uh, so maybe you decide to add this or not. But even if you're getting on a plane and going somewhere where you can't take your knife, you might be able to get away with something like this for a lot of your tasks anyway. Hopefully this answered a bunch of questions that are related to this subject matter. But if you have anything else you'd like me to cover, let me know down in the comments and I will try to get back to you. As always, thank you for your time and we'll talk again soon.